little bit about alternative therapies for cerebral palsy. What's out there today? What are you excited about? What are you worried about? And then what do you think some of the real ethical challenges are around alternative therapies? Unfortunately, the uh, scientifically validated uh, good things that are out there that we can offer are quite limited, uh, which leaves um, people open to looking at everything else. And there are many examples, uh, far too many now, of people preying on the vulnerability of these families, and uh, I think it's a huge problem. So how do you help families who come to you with their children navigate the information that they gather on the internet, on radio, in newspapers? And we try to give them a, a warning up front that a lot of what they read may be bad information and that uh, things that sound too good to be true usually are. We need to make decisions that are in the best interests of their child and their family. To be very careful and cautious about where they invest time and hope and energy. Um, to, of course, avoid doing any harm to their kid. A, you know, nothing to lose approach is not a good reason to try, uh, usually, uh, to try a treatment. You have to balance that ethical issue with the, you know, the family's autonomy to make their own decisions. I can't obviously tell them what to do, but I think, because in reality, if you're a busy clinician, you have limited time with your patients, and you always try to make time for issues like this, but they're going to be reading things every week and having new questions, and so the knowledge translation that NeuroDevNet is so uh, motivated towards is very important in that regard, to push out all the good information and to try and counter the bad, I think, and uh, um, I think that's a key going forward. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Kirchner. Sure.